Imagine a scenario where there is a large vessel or a ship in a sea. Of course, you have a captain who is in charge of the ship and responsible to steer it all along the journey. But in order to reach the final destination, the captain does need the support of a tugboat who, for example, helps in avoiding any obstacle that comes on the way and eventually guides it to reach the destination. So if we map this scenario to the case of a PhD, I think we can draw some interesting analogies. For example, PhD is like a ship. A PhD student is like a captain who is in charge of one's PhD and responsible to drive it to completion. And a supervisor could be considered to be like a tugboat whose role is to direct and correct the path of a PhD student whenever he or she deviates from it and uh, guides one's PhD to completion. So needless to say that the role of a supervisor is very very important in anyone's PhD. And the question that arises is that what are the key considerations or what should be the key considerations that one needs to take into account when choosing one's supervisor in one's PhD. So in this video my intention is to answer this question and uh, specifically I would like to discuss six points or six considerations that in my opinion should be taken to, into account when someone is choosing one's PhD supervisor. So let's go through them one by one. The first point to consider in making the choice for your PhD supervisor is to see whether your PhD topic aligns well with the research interests of your supervisor. Ideally, you should choose a supervisor who has a strong expertise in the area of your intended PhD topic. But often that's not the case and uh, you might need to reach a balance between what you are excited to do in your PhD and what the expertise of that supervisor are. So make this choice such that you and your intended supervisor are a good mutual fit. The second consideration is around deciding between an experienced or established academic to be one's supervisor or an early stage academic to be one's supervisor. I think either one could be a suitable choice, but one needs to see the advantages and disadvantages of these two types of uh, supervisors. For example, uh, if you take the case of an experienced academic to be a supervisor, uh, often these type of supervisor are, uh, you know, you know, very busy because you can expect uh, a lot of PhD students and postdoc, postdocs in their labs, sometime 20 to 30 as well. So you can imagine they might not have enough time to spend, uh, you know, with each PhD student. So one must be very self-motivated and uh, one must have a, a good ability to work independently in order to survive in that kind of lab. Otherwise, you know, uh, you run the risk of really languishing in that lab. On the other hand, uh, if you take the case of an early stage academic to be uh, your supervisor, uh, you can expect this kind of supervisors to be more involved in your PhD and uh, you know because they are at an early stage of their career so they are often you know more motivated uh, and they will spend more time uh, you know with their PhD students. So I think uh, you should make the choice or you should choose between the two types of supervisor uh, based on uh, you know assessing that where exactly you fit well. The third point to consider is the environment and culture of the lab of your intended PhD supervisor. Here you can actually check whether uh, you know that supervisor hires people from diverse backgrounds and uh, nationalities or does that supervisor only you know hire people from some specific background. Because I would personally prefer a lab where you know there are people from uh, you know multicultural and diverse backgrounds because I think that could be a good learning experience and uh, a good journey really. The second thing you can do here is uh, to actually reach out to existing PhD students and postdocs in order to understand uh, you know what's the environment like uh, in that lab and actually some good supervisors would uh, encourage uh, you know new PhD students 
to talk to the existing PhD students before joining the lab in order to you know understand the environment and culture in that lab. But here I can uh, you know uh, understand that the existing PhD students might not be too open uh, you know about uh, the culture for understandably for understandable reasons. Uh, and what you could alternatively do is to reach out to the PhD students that have already graduated from that lab and uh, to actually hopefully get a more honest uh, view about the culture of that lab. Uh, because essentially what you want is uh, to have your PhD experience and PhD journey to be enjoyable and you do not want to ruin uh, three to four years of life uh, you know, working in a place, uh, you know, that is, uh, you know, not really enjoyable. Uh, the, the other thing I would say uh, you can see in order to assess the culture of that lab is to see whether the PhD students have kept the relationship with the supervisor after they have graduated, uh, because uh, I think that could be a good indication. Because if uh, a lot of PhD students have not kept the relationship with the supervisor, after the uh, you know the graduation from that lab i think that tells a lot about uh, the culture of that lab the fourth point to consider is to see what the students uh, are doing after leaving the lab of your intended supervisor because this actually tells you two things uh, firstly it tells you how employable the students from that lab are and secondly it tells you how supportive uh, you know, your intended supervisor is in helping his or her PhD students to find uh, the job after doing the PhD. This, in my opinion, is a very important consideration uh, because uh, surely you want to graduate from a lab, uh, you know, that improves your career prospects after doing your PhD. The fifth point to consider is to see whether your intended PhD supervisor provides opportunities to his or her PhD students uh, to flourish and uh, you know to be more visible in research community. Because this, in my opinion, is also very important. Uh, in this regard, you could try to find out whether that supervisor encourages uh, his or her PhD students to, for example, go to conferences. Uh, because going to conferences helps you to enhance your network and uh, you know make your work and uh, hence you more visible uh, because this inevitably improves your career prospects uh, after completing your PhD. The sixth and the final point to consider is the university where your supervisor works. This is because the reputation of the university does matter uh, not in all cases because you can find some very good supervisors in lesser ranked universities as well. But I would still say having a supervisor in uh, you know a top university does help. Uh, also because some employers uh, actually prefer uh, PhD graduates coming out of uh, from certain universities. Uh, it's not great in my opinion but uh, that's how it is. I really hope that this video would assist you in making an appropriate choice for your PhD supervisor and uh, I also wish that your PhD journey is uh, not just full of learning but also very enjoyable. Please let me have your feedback on this video, uh, particularly on uh, anything that you believe I have missed and uh, finally just a request to please hit the like button if you like this video and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel because this really encourages me to create uh, more such content. Stay safe.